Dude, this is absolutely crazy, man. 8th April 2024. For the first time, I witnessed a total solar eclipse. It's been three days and I still haven't recovered from what I have experienced. Hey guys, I'm Saurabh. Welcome to the channel. Today in this video, we are going to talk about photographing solar eclipse. Everything you need to know as a photographer, including camera gear, camera settings, how to photograph different phases of the eclipse will be covered in this particular video. I've made a few mistakes while photographing the eclipse this time and I learned it the hard way. And I'm going to talk about that too so that you don't make it next time. This video is going to be super informative. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Talking about camera gear, the camera body is not important. Crop sensor, full frame, mirrorless, DSLR, anything will work. You don't need anything fancy. Lenses is where you should focus on. You have two options. One is to use a wide angle lens that will allow you to capture the sun and the foreground subject as well. The second option is to use telephoto zoom lenses to capture close-ups of the sun. For wide angle lenses, anything from 14 to 35 millimeters will be ideal. When it comes to telephoto lenses, I would recommend to at least shoot at 100 millimeters or higher. The most important piece of gear that is 100% mandatory is this particular filter right here. This is the solar filter. If you don't use this, you can permanently damage your camera sensor. Now, what is a solar filter? No rocket science, this is basically just a ND filter, but it is very dark. If I try to see right through it, I literally cannot see anything. It is that dark. How dark should the ND filter be? Will a 6-stop ND filter work? No. Will a 10-stop ND filter work? No. This is a 16.6 stops ND filter. Anything less than 16 stops and you can damage your camera sensor. The question is, can you stack two different filters instead of using a solar filter? Absolutely, you can stack, for example, a 10-stop ND filter and a 6-stop ND filter and it acts like a 16-stop ND filter. Just make sure that you stack them properly and there is no light leaks. Talking about camera settings, your aperture should be between f5.6 to f11. Ideally, check the sweet spot of your lens and try to be around it. Your ISO should range from ISO 100 to ISO 800. The shutter speed will depend on the exposure you're going for. Make sure you reach at least 30 minutes prior to the start of the solar eclipse and test your exposures. Along with the exposure, what you should also check is the focusing. Using the infinity focus marking on the lens is not enough. It might not be super accurate. So zoom in and use manual focus till the sun is sharp. Be it any kind of astrophotography, this is something you should always keep in mind. There are two phases of solar eclipse, partial phase and totality. Both the phases needs to be photographed differently. For the partial phase, make sure you are aware of the path the sun will follow. Since the sun was moving horizontally left to right and vertically downwards, I started with the sun at the extreme top left of my frame and used intervalometer to take shots at regular intervals. The interval need not be very small, anywhere between 5 to 20 seconds according to me is enough. Now coming to the part where I messed up, photographing the totality. While shooting the partial phases, the solar filter should be on. But during totality, it gets extremely dark and using an ND filter doesn't make any sense. You should remove the solar filter, you should remove any kind of ND filters while photographing the totality. And I did not know this. I don't know what to say, I still regret it a lot. I still managed to capture a decent image at f2.8, 1 30th of a second, ISO 12800. Yes, the photo is noisy, but I can't do anything about it right now. The totality phase lasted for about 90 seconds and I wish I had removed the filter. I would have been able to capture a much sharper, higher quality image at lower ISO and I do regret it, but the experience was unfreaking believable Trust me when I say this, I did not expect this. It was out of the world. Everything around me got darker and blue in color. Those 90 seconds were the best 90 seconds of my life, period. 
get the shots, but also don't forget to experience the totality phase with your naked eyes whenever you get a chance. You will never forget it in your life. This was my first time photographing the eclipse. And after doing it, I realized there are a couple of things I want to try out next time. I'll share them with you. The first one is during the totality phase, take bracketed exposures ranging from 1 30th of a second to 1 1,000th of a second. Keep your aperture and ISO constant. Later, you can combine these exposures and create a high dynamic range image. I can't show you any sample because I was stupid enough to not remove the filter. It's okay. <sighs> Next time. One more thing I would like to try is use a multi-camera setup. For example, I can use two different cameras, one with a telephoto lens and one with a wide angle lens. This way I get two different compositions and I'm taking complete advantage of the solar eclipse. I agree, I did make a mistake and it is going to hurt a bit, but as a photographer, it is not the first time I've made a mistake, but it's okay, you learn from them. The next time I shoot, I know I will be more confident and I hope you will be too. That's it from this video guys. I hope this video helped you. If it did, press the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Oh no, this is the like button, sorry. Subscribe to the channel and let's reach 1 million as soon as possible. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.